Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. No mai, haere mai ki te zui. Me mahi kahi tātou, mō te oranga o te katoa. Tēnā koe, hello everybody and welcome to our webinar today. The whakatauke I said was we should work together for the well-being of everybody, which is what we do here with our webinars and everything like that to help you with, you know, the different functions within infant care and everything along those lines. So you do the great work out there with the tamariki and we help you to do the funding. What we're going to do is go through the process of submitting the RS7. So what happens is that I'll go through the process of stepping you through submitting your RS7 return and just have a look at a few other things um, as well because we had a very different um, funding round this round and there's some things that you need to be across. So we'll have a look at that as well. So when we're wanting to go through the process of submitting our RS7, there's some checks and balances that we need to do. Now, one of the pertinent things from this funding period is about the EC12 exemption. So what you need to do is ensure that you've applied the EC12 exemption to your centre calendar for this whole funding period. Our heading does say red light setting, however, it was updated to be until the 31st of May. So when we move to orange light, that EC12 exemption continue to apply. So effectively for this whole funding period. So now what you need to do is that if you haven't been doing anything with your centre calendar, please come to our information page here from our notice board where the second dot along, which will take you to all of that information. So now when we're going through to submit our RS7, we come to reports and we can either come to financial reports and select funding, or you might just come down to MOE reports and RS7 return funding. We've got really helpful information in the screen for you here. So it says, please ensure the following has been done. So you've set up your holidays for the preceding five months and the four months following the date you select. So that's our August, September, October, November. And that you have got child daily signing sheets created for each day of the funding period, staff timesheets for each day of the funding period, if applicable. That's because home-based services don't need to have staff timesheets. And of course, it states that you need to have reviewed and actioned your frequent absence reports for the period. As we know, there was the EC12 exemption that was for the whole funding period, but remembering too that you were needing to manage those children who weren't attending for long periods of time and making sure that you were getting their notice of um, intent to return, etc., which we talk about here when you're thinking about for days that you can't claim funding. So for those you didn't get the necessary documentation for, you should have selected no funding on the child daily sign-in sheets for the days you can't claim funding for. Just coming back to our info here, so when we're talking about checking our centre calendar, we just come here to centre and come to calendar. So it takes you to our current month. You'll notice that the national public holidays have been populated for you. It's the regional public holidays or teacher days, et cetera, that you need to be selecting. Now, while we're talking about the centre calendar at the moment, for the majority of the days that you're operating, it would be the EC12 service open with attendances. The Ministry offered all of the early childhood services a teacher-only day that would be funded. If you've used that teacher-only day that the Ministry said that they would fund you for, in your centre calendar, you needed to select emergency closure instead. So not the teacher day because it's not funded, you needed to select emergency closure, have child daily sign-in sheets with all children marked absent for that day, so that that information will come through to your funded child hours. Now, when we come through to our reports, MOE reports and RS7 funding return. We're saying that, yes, this is what we've done. And now what we need to do is to check our data. We need to run the funding hours report. So when we've got funding hours selected there, when we go print, it will come up if there's any problems. And I have created a problem on purpose so we can sort of see what that looks like. It says, cell highlight in orange indicate missing information. Please do not submit your RS7 until you are sure this information is not required. 
So if you've changed ownership partway through a funding period, for example, so you may have orange cells for the dates that you don't have any data. The previous owner will need to print the RS7 from InfoCare and email that directly to the ministry. In this case, I'm saying, no, I operated the whole funding period, so I shouldn't have any problems. And we can see that the orange is here because I don't have staff timesheets for that week. So I'm just going to go through the process of creating the timesheets for that week. There we go. Current enrollments create. Of course, you would need to mark any changes and make sure you didn't have any view ratios, issues or anything like that as well. So remembering that we are in a demonstration system, so I'm going to proceed anyway without reviewing that message. So reports, MOE reports, RS7 return funding. And so now when we click print for our funding hours report, you can see that we don't have any more oranges. Now, this is the data that the ministry gets when you submit your RS7. They don't get the percentages or anything like that. It's purely your funded child hours and your staff hour count. Now, if you've used discretionary hours throughout this funding period, the ministry have announced that you need to provide a table of that. That happens as we go through the process of submitting the RS7. It's nothing that you need to do differently. So now we've got July 2022 selected. Now what we can do is go through the process of submitting our RS7. Right, so read the information that you've got on the screen because you need to confirm it. You may notice that it says an RS7 with this date has already been submitted. That was me playing this morning, ready for our webinar. So once you've read the information on the page, please click continue. Okay, so this is the information about submitting your RS7 return. I've read it and I'm ready to continue. Now, this is your funding hours table. So like I mentioned before, the ministry gets your funded child hours and your, and your staff hour count. You'll notice that you've got emergency closures highlighted there. Of course, no staff hours because you have no staff timesheet. You've also got your total. So this is the number of under two hours worth of funding you're claiming over two, number of 20 hours ECE, your plus 10 total, and then the total number of hours of funding that you're claiming. So you'd need to make sure that that is not over your license as well. There may be children you need to select no funding for. So you're reviewing your child data. You can see here that we use three discretionary hours. So this is what's going through to the ministry. And you can see here the number of days that you're being advanced for. This is taken from your centre calendar. Once you're happy with that information, click continue. Great, so now this is the attestation of certificated teachers' salaries. You need to review this statement and select the appropriate option for your service. And click continue. Now this is about the pay parity. So you need to review this information and select what's appropriate for your service. If you're opting in for pay parity, you would select yes. If you're not opting in for pay parity, you select no and now click continue. So now you've got specific statements that you need to confirm as well. So you need to read through this information and then populate your name, phone number, and your job title. Then once we scroll down, it says here, are you ready to submit your RS7 to the MOE? We click yes to say that we are happy for that to go. Of course, it says if you wish to retain a printed copy of your RS7, you can click on the print button there, or you can print it at any time too. So it's telling you your RS7 has been submitted to the ministry and there's nothing further that you do. The ministry have published communications too to say that if they once they've received your RS7, they will respond to you to let you know that you've received it, and it's normally about two to three business days. If you want to check to see if you have actually submitted your return because you can't remember or whatever, what you can do is that you can come across to Utilities, come down to File Download, and then within here we will find RS7 Return. 
There we go, RF7 return 2022 July. This is the one that I have just submitted here. You can click on it to open it and review the information that you have sent to the Ministry. If you need to print your RS7 because you operated partway through the month, you had a change of ownership or something along those lines, what you can do is come to your reports, MOE reports, RS7 return funding. What you can do now is change this to be RS7 and then you can click print to send that to your printer when we go print to printer. And that is how you submit your RS7 return.